Welcome to another Lightroom editing video. On this shot I want to apply a very warm dreamy look. For that we are going to be using quite a few different masks. So I want to go into detail on them. And if you want to follow along the post processing you can find the raw file in the description of the video. So let's go. Alright here we have the raw file opened up in Lightroom. And the first thing I want to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast and for the dreamy look I'm aiming for, less contrast is kind of helpful. So that's a good starting point. Next up, as I said in the intro, I want this image to be warm, just like a proper sunset. So I'm going to try and increase the temperature. I don't want to raise it too much because I like having some blue tones left in here, but that's looking like a good spot right there. Also, I do want to increase the tint, giving the whole image some more magenta tones as well. Just like that. So right away you can see the sky is very well exposed, but the foreground is a little dark. I don't think I can change that by using just those settings right here, but I want to change them a little bit, which should help anyway. So I'm going to first increase the shadows just a little bit as well as the whites. Now you don't see much difference but it's always small steps that lead to a good image. So let's continue by increasing the blacks. All right. Again increasing the shadows and increasing the blacks will lead to less contrast which in turn gives me a softer image and thus creates a dreamy effect overall. And to further work on the dreaminess, I am going to drop the clarity. And especially on those edges on the mountains, it will make them softer and makes it look like we get some nice sunlight glow up there. Of course, I don't want to lose too much sharpness in here, so I'm going to also increase the texture just a tiny bit. And then let's bring up the vibrance and the saturation just to make this image somewhat colorful. So let's compare it to before. You can see the colors look pretty different now. We do have a softer image overall and we do have more details in the shadows, but still it's way too dark for a good image. I am going to change that using masks. So let's head into the masks panel. So because the sky is well exposed, we don't want to change that. But how do we make the landscape and the foreground brighter without affecting the sky? With the new masks Adobe has added, that's pretty easy. First off, let me create a linear gradient outside of this image. So you can see every single pixel of this picture is affected. Since we don't want the sky, we can simply click on this mask right here. Then we are clicking on the subtract button and say select sky. Lightroom will then subtract the sky from our linear gradient. The only selection that is left is the foreground landscape, just like we want it. Let's fix the underexposure by simply increasing the exposure first. And you can nicely see the histogram changing without getting any overexposure in there. And you can see how the foreground changes without affecting the sky at all. That looks really, really good. Besides the exposure, the foreground does look a little too bluish for my taste, so I'm going to fix that by increasing the temperature. And thus we are removing the color cast. Now I can further work on the exposure by bringing up the shadows. And we could even add a little bit of contrast. Just to make the foreground look a little better. All right, and also I want to drop the saturation to not get overwhelmed by all those blue tones in the foreground. Now that's looking really, really good. You can see with just one mask, we have pretty much fixed the image. But let's continue adding a few special effects on this shot. I'm going to create another mask. This time I'm using a linear gradient again. And I do want to make the top part of the sky just a little darker, giving it a little more contrast. So maybe something like this. And in this linear gradient, let's again bring down the exposure. 
only a tiny bit, but it looks much more pleasing this way. Also, I do want to add a little bit of glow just over the mountains. So for that reason, I'm using a radial gradient. Then creating it over the brightest part in the sky, somewhere like this. And I'm making sure this radial gradient is overlapping those mountains quite a bit. To add the glow, I am simply pushing the blacks. I don't want to push them too much. Also, we can make this look a little softer by bringing down the clarity. Again, only tiny steps to not overdo it. And if you want to have a really crazy glow effect, we can also bring down the dehaze. Which works really, really good here. Just like that. And then we can further adjust the size of this radial gradient just to our needs. Perfect. So then I do want to make the road in the foreground a little brighter as well. Again, I first want to use the radial gradient and just drag it up like this. So the whole thing in the foreground is covered. In here, let's try bringing up the highlights. And let's bring up the whites. And we could even increase the blacks for some increased softness in this area. I might as well decrease the clarity just a bit, but that looks really good. Now to work a little more specifically on the boat itself, I can try the new select subject mask. So let's give it a try. As you can see, Lightroom is selecting a little too much here. So I'm again making use of the subject button. This time I'm simply going to use the brush tool and I'm brushing over the parts which I don't want to change. So I don't want to change the shadow of the boat. I also want, don't want to affect this thing on the right side. Uh, but that's looking like a good selection. Now in here, let's bring up the exposure. Just a little bit. Otherwise, this might look a bit unnatural with the boat being brighter as the rest of the landscape. All right. But that's it for the local adjustments for now. Again, let's compare to before. You can see the landscape in the foreground looks much, much better. And we have a much clearer subject in the center. So I'm pretty satisfied with this. However, the colors still don't look that great. I do want to change that now with the color grading. First off, I'm heading into the tone curve panel. Here I'm selecting the red channel specifically and I'm going to pick the point for the highlights and just drag it to the left, giving this image some more sunset colors. Maybe not that much. And I could even drop it a little bit to reduce the amount of overexposure, just like that. This And this might look very, very subtle as well. But if I turn off the tone curve, you can see quite the difference, especially in the sky with the highlights. Then let's continue. I'm skipping over the HSL panel. I don't really need it for this shot, but I do want to head into the color grading panel for the split toning. And first off, as always, I want to start with the highlights. Again, since we have a sunset shot, I am going to apply a warm color to the highlights, just like in the tone curve menu. So I'm going to looking for a warm hue somewhere around here and let's bring up the saturation. All right, that looks awesome. But of course, we don't want to overdo it with the warm tones, so I'm going to use the mid tones to introduce some cold color tone, somewhere in the blue range, and let's bring up the saturation. Okay, and let's do the same for the shadows. Again, somewhere here, but with a lower saturation than before. Or actually, I might push it a little further. That's looking pretty good. And that's it for the color grading of this image. So I don't think I want to apply any sharpening in here. That means that is it for the editing part in Lightroom. I do want to apply some minor adjustments and remove a few objects here and there in Photoshop. So feel free to stay. And first off, there are a few sensor spots. So I'm using the spot healing brush and I zoom in into the image and just brush over those dots. And of course, I also want to clean up the foreground a bit. 
and I can do that using the spot healing brush and just brushing over those little branches. Perfect. Okay, that looks much cleaner. So I guess that's it for editing this image. I hope this was helpful and interesting. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you for watching this video.